Relationship and Fellowship is my second book by David Anderson. And I gotta say, I just like David Anderson's writing. It really makes me wish that I could sit under his preaching every single Sunday. Because even in places where I don't agree with him, I find Anderson to be reasonable, thoughtful, and a very good communicator. And I also get from the book that he is someone who has a lot of care and concern for those who will read his book. In Relationship and Fellowship, Dr. Anderson finally presents his own book based upon the idea that was the foundation for Charlie Bing's excellent Grace, Salvation, and Discipleship. Dr. Anderson uses his A-truth and B-truth approach when looking at scripture to discover the importance of determining if a verse is teaching us about A-truth, and that is a truth on how to enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, or a B-truth, and that is truth on how to deepen our fellowship with Jesus. So for Charlie, he used this concept to write about salvation verse discipleship or regeneration versus growing in sanctification, and now Anderson uses it for regeneration versus deepening your friendship with Christ. Now these concepts are very similar, but Bing's was a little bit different as it was more doctrinal, and Anderson's book now is more pastoral. So I should say to anyone who reads Free Grace books, if you enjoyed Bing's Grace, Salvation, and Discipleship, and Anderson's Relationship and Fellowship is a logical sequel. Now this book is divided into two sections. The first section is 13 chapters that are kind of like 13 separate sermons covering the report the importance of maintaining that distinction between relationship and fellowship. Now I think I loved pretty much all of these chapters. I, I really enjoyed it. And the second half of the book, which I think I think Anderson might have worked a little bit too hard trying to discourage some of his readers from reading the end of this book because uh, it gets a little bit more technical, but it covers the same topic. And right from the beginning of this book, in the introduction itself, we see the heart of Dr. Anderson in writing this book out of a love for Christians who have been beaten down by a mountain of guilt from their own pastors and church leaders and Christian authors. Anderson writes, When we turn the requirements for intimate fellowship with God into the requirements for an eternal relationship with God, we consign the sensitive Christian to a life of defeat, morbidity, and even depression. Dr. Anderson's goal is to help you walk closer to God in a friendship that is freed from a life of defeat. A life of defeat where you constantly need to be watching your behavior to determine if you are living good enough in order to maintain your place in God's family. You don't get your place in God's family by your behavior, but by Christ's work. His teaching on forgiving and overcoming an unforgiving spirit, something with that a lot of Christians struggle with in their fellowship with God and other believers, uh, that teaching was a goldmine in my view. I loved how he wrote, To fully appreciate God's love, we must find a person unnecessary to us, with nothing to offer us, and with an unresponsive spirit toward us, perhaps even someone who erects barriers of offense against us, then to love this person and surmount the barriers he has erected. This is what God did for us. That is a beautiful picture of forgiveness and how we need to forgive others as God first forgave us. My favorite chapter in the book was the chapter on Luke 15, which was entitled, Guess Who Moved? His teaching on the lost sheep, coin, and son were excellent. The next time I teach or preach on those parables, I am going to Dr. Anderson's book as my very first resource. I loved how he talked about that all three of these parables are really about the shepherd who is seeking the sheep, the woman who is seeking her coin, and the father who is waiting on his son to return. These aren't about the sheep, the coin, and the son. They are about the wonderful love of the father.
And I, I loved the emphasis about how God is looking and seeking those who are lost. He is waiting on his wayward children to come back. You really need to read this chapter. Um, I feel like that chapter alone is worth the price of this book. Now, on to the second half of relationship and fellowship. This half, second half, was a little bit more technical, like Dr. Anderson said. But if you are in any way interested in ancient land treaties, old land grants, or how we relate the Old Testament law to life today, uh, I think it was all really good. I, I enjoyed the second half of this book. My only complaint is that I wish it had chapter divisions in it. I think it would have flowed a little bit better with some chapter divisions to break it up instead of being just one long section. And it was in the second half of the book where Dr. Anderson talked about the Mosaic Law, and I really appreciated his teaching on that subject. It made a lot of sense to me, and I think it should really be crucial for anybody to consider before they try to make sense in their own thinking how the Mosaic Law fits into God's plan for history. His writing on typology uh, was, was so good. I, I highlighted the entire page when he talked about it. I just loved this part in that section when he wrote, it would be like saying the main purpose of the Ark, which we know had a typological significance, was to be a type of Christ. Really? Wasn't it to save Noah, his family, and all from dying in the flood? Of course, we say, don't, but don't forget the typology, to which we could respond, right, but don't forget the main purpose. It wasn't typology. It was to keep people from drowning. So that section was just really well written. I thought it was great from my perspective, and I think it can really help with understanding the Old Testament and how it relates to the New Testament and to us today. I also thought he gave the best arguments I have read so far on how we should understand the phrase, call upon the name of the Lord. In Romans chapter 10, uh, Dr. Anderson argues that this is not about calling on the Lord to save us from hell, but about a salvation for this life. Now, at this point, I don't agree with him on this take. Maybe he'll, someone will persuade me later. Um, I don't agree with him on it, but I thought it was really persuasive and really well written. And I need to end here at this point, even though there's more I could say just because of time. So I just want to say I... I really loved Relationship and Fellowship. It was better than I expected it to be. Five out of five stars. Again, if you enjoyed Bing's Grace, Salvation, and Discipleship, I don't know how you could pass on Dr. Anderson's Relationship and Fellowship. This is a book that will encourage you on how to walk with the Spirit, how to walk with Christ in this world with a spirit of peace and in a position of confidence. And if you've enjoyed this review and you want to stay engaged in the wonderful world of Christian literature, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the Reveries YouTube channel.